Great. Welcome everybody to the Monday, May 9th meeting, 2022 of meeting of the Conway Select Board. Uh, if I call the meeting to order, and we're going to skip ahead on the agenda since we have a couple of distinguished visitors uh, that we can we can accommodate them first rather than going through our moments and warrants and whatnot. We'll say that for a little bit later. That's okay with everybody. Um, and since the we go straight to new business, it's Kimberly Noke McPhee is here of her tribe. I don't know if you saw, did everybody get a chance to see the late arriving letter from Kimberly? Uh, but, uh, yeah, although I hope we'll come with a little explanation. Uh, as much as well, we love Long Island, but uh, and, and we did. I did just already speak to um, Ronique about this. There is just a paragraph that I, I'd like to just make a couple of questions to so just talk about, just talk about whether it would be Kimberly's consent. Um, uh, Great. And, uh, so <laughs> tell us about Long Island Sound Futures Fund grant program. Um, why well, it seems i mean i like thinking outside the box i like approaching this you know i was on that call with all these people a couple months ago with you and um this is uh, this is a, a a big issue and the opacity of it and how they you couldn't get a hold of the people that were saying it was unpermittable and you couldn't get an explanation and you couldn't get an appeal or you couldn't get a conversation with them and um and the dp representative was sort of perfectly okay with all of with that that reality and just and saying the past the concerns along but um i don't had great i never had great uh, uh confidence that those concerns were being adequately passed along so this seems to be one way of tackling that and i'm glad that you you know that, that you're doing something outside the box like this but it also seemed like it was uh i don't know um focused on getting the grant from somebody or something, and, but all of a sudden we're part of the Connecticut River watershed. And, uh, the, you know, um, so I guess there's there's money down there, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, yes, um, absolutely. There's quite a, there's $10 million in, it's everything okay with my audio? I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Okay. <laughs> Um, there's $10 million of funding for the Long Island Sound Futures Fund, and this is money that comes up every year. And so it's a grant program that has successfully funded the types of river and uh, resiliency work that happens in Vermont and New Hampshire routinely and also in Connecticut. And so Massachusetts is this big black hole in the Connecticut River watershed, which extends from like the Canadian border down through uh, Connecticut and empties into Long Island Sound. And the reason why this grant program cares about what happens in Massachusetts is because the Deerfield River watershed and the Millers in Franklin County are big tributaries to the Connecticut. And probably most of you saw that satellite image after Tropical Storm Irene that showed that huge sediment plume in Long Island Sound. Um, it was quite dramatic. And we all know that Tropical Storm Irene mobilized literally tons and tons of sediment. Nitrogen is one of the pollutants that binds to sediment and nitrogen contributes to the water quality problems that they're having in Long Island Sound. So the grant program is interested in, um, cause I had several conversations with them prior to the RFR opening. Can everybody hear me? Cause you guys are frozen.
Hi, Lori. Or who? Hello? Hello? I don't know what, oops, I don't know what happened. Um, oh my gosh, I was just like rambling on and then I, just, sorry about <laughs> that. I was just, so I was on a roll and then I noticed, oh wow, everyone's frozen. <laughs> Bill literally said, I hope she realizes. <laughs> That's I'm sorry, it made me get a password and everything. It just, it just went away. It just. <laughs> So I don't know, like when, wh at what point did you stop hearing me? Right when you said plume of sediment, famous <laughs> for plume of sediment. Okay. <laughs> so the last word we heard. All right. So the plume of sediment after tropical storm, Irene. So sediment um, can carry nitrogen that's bound to the sediment particles, and nitrogen is a primary uh, pollutant and a concern for folks that are working on the water quality in Long Island Sound. So that's why this grant program is interested in funding work in Massachusetts. So um, the so the project it is outside the box from what they normally would fund, but they recognize that this is a problem, that our permitting agencies haven't kind of caught up with all of the policy that they've been advancing for climate resiliency and, and the grant programs that they've um, rolled out. And so Conway happens but, to have... But do we know that they don't have a permitting pathway for these programs, or is it that they're just not communicating what that pathway is? So I think it's both, Phil. I think they are unfamiliar with many of these types of projects. So that causes a lot of delays and back and forth and um, cost overruns because we're kind of educating as we go. And then for the Oxbow Reconnection Project, for them to just like throw up their hands and say, well, it's unpermittable because you wanna reroute the river uh, through land that has wetlands now that um, the river has abandoned that channel is just, you know, it's ridiculous. So I don't know if, and this is what the project would find out. Are the, are the barriers with the laws themselves, right? Is there something in the state regulations that pro, um, prohibit or really highly constrain these types of projects or, and or, is it a situation where the regulatory staff, because they're unfamiliar with this type of work, they just can't see how it can fit into the permitting process. So it's much easier to just say no. Um, the, what the project would do would convene um, this blue ribbon panel and bring in people from Vermont who have been doing this work literally for two decades and have this kind of technology transfer in these discussions and hopefully bring the regulators to a point where we have design typical. So if somebody wants to do um, a floodplain reconnection project or somebody wants to do an oxbow reconnection project, that there's an agreement in, you know, already that the regulators recognize that as a project type. We've already hopefully worked out 
some of the kinks and the issues so that when they see a site specific proposal for that type of work, you know, we're already a couple of steps ahead. Um, the South River Meadow project, we spent, um, the, consult the consultant actually had $35,000 in cost overruns that we did not pay because we didn't have the money to pay it, but um, they just ate it. And it was related to these in-stream structures. And a lot of it was just the education, like, okay, there's a fish in the South River that's an, you know, an endangered species, but the habitat in the South River for this fish, fish is already degraded. What we're proposing to do would um, enhance the habitat. And they just couldn't like wrap their heads around that. And when we finally got them to agree, you know, it literally, it took $35,000 of, of back and forth effort. And, you know, so the bottom line is these, if the state, you can tell I'm very passionate about this. If the state just wants to do a million rain gardens as part of their MVP program, then that's what, that's what they'll do. But if they actually want to invest that money in projects that make a difference, they will participate in this, you know, panel and we'll, we'll have some hard discussions about what the roadblocks are and what we can do to take them down. But the, so is this something that has been, that you've been, that you've already discussed with the state regulators and the section chiefs at the state agency, that this is something that they want to attend and that they feel that would, that has value? So I've been talking about this for several years to anyone who'll listen. Um, once I got, you know, this grant funder interested in the idea, I reached out to all these people. Um, and so far I have um, Vermont people who are ready to participate. I have the state um, national flood insurance program manager and uh, director of DCR's floodplain management program who's agreed to participate. I've got DEP um, grant funders who are supposed to get back to me this week. Um, Beth Lambert, who is the director of the Division of Ecological Restoration. Um, we're having conversations back and forth. She's very interested. I'm also going to bring in the Franklin County Legislative Delegation um, because it may be that some of these agencies aren't willing to commit for the grant application, right? But if I get funded, then we'll, you know, put the pressure on them to, to come to the table. And so by involving the legislative delegation, hopefully I can have that, you know, pressure brought to bear. Um, the MVP program said no, which I was very disappointed about, but, you know, whatever, again, like if I get the money, I'm going to put the squeeze on all these people again. Right now, it's kind of, I think they feel like, oh, if we have reservations about it, you know, she doesn't have the money. So why, you know, why do we commit to it at this point? But I've got the Franklin Conservation District on board, creating resilient communities, group that formed after Tropical Storm Irene and has representatives from um, a lot of state and federal agencies. So I've managed to, you know, put together a small group of people that have given me letters. And then the rest of the folks, you know, I'm having discussions with them right now. Vermont has been doing Oxbow restoration they do all kinds of stuff up there. Yep. They, how do they get the permit? It's, it's nature-based solutions is what we're talking NBS. Right. Well, those are the buzz, buzzwords definitely that I have to use for the grant funder. But um, Bob, the Vermont Rivers Program has been doing this work for like over 20 years. And so the state funds their rivers program and their legislation. Actually, they just updated their water quality standards. And in those water quality standards, they talk about habitat restoration, 
floodplain connection, all the things that we're trying to achieve down here, they've codified in their surface water. that legislation here in Massachusetts? We, we don't have it, but I got a copy of Vermont's legislation and I'm going to a listening session next week. DEP um, wants feedback on how to update the water quality standards. So I'm gonna share that information at the listening session. Um, I think one of the biggest stumbling blocks we have is the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program. And oh, the other, I also reached out um, to an environmental law firm that we worked with on the river corridor easement. Um, I would have to do, a, uh, I would have to go through a competitive bid process. It's federal money. Like I can't, you know, just pick somebody uh, right now, but I did want to kind of gauge their interest in the project. But so I think it's, it's important to have, you know, the legal perspective, right? What, what does the law say we can or can't do? Like, is the bias in the reviewer or is, you know, are all our are, are, uh, regulations, our laws like so antiquated? And if the answer is yes about the laws, then having the legislative delegation involved is going to be critical too, because we're going to have to like work to get the laws to come up to speed with all of these climate initiatives that the state is spending millions and millions of dollars on. Um, so I, you know, it's, it's pie in the sky maybe, but hey, if we don't, you know, if we don't try like, or if we don't start the conversation, nothing's ever gonna change. So could you be more explicit as to what your issue is? So I, I don't really have, a, you know, what she's asking for from, from us is is like, it's like monopoly money. It's like play money. It's not real. It's, I mean, well, it's we're real happy, money, but we're, it's not we're, money. We're happy, happy to say yes. Yeah, but, right. but but I care, like, uh, this is this is a real issue for me too, because, you know, we, act, we had a private resident that bought land that privately owns the land for the project that was going to underwrite and pay for the project, and we can't get it done. And that's that and we couldn't get an answer we cannot get an answer as to why we cannot get it done so i think like everything that kimberly is saying is sort of like an overarching like holistic view of it but the nuts and the bolts of it were that there are regulators that are making this decision that do not explain the basis for like why they made a decision who exactly made it it's anonymous um as far as we can tell I don't, I don't, you probably learned more about this since then, and I'm probably, my, my knowledge is dated like so many other things. Um, well, not really. You're, you're kind of spot on because the staff that was, the DP Welland staff that was involved in this, you know, decision to say no, two, one, one of them is retired and two were terminated because they refused to comply with the governor's vaccine mandate. So one of them. <laughs> Uh, I mean, our guy. But, right, uh, Mark. Right, Mark yeah. Stinson. Right. So yeah. I, I actually did reach out to Mark and Dave Cameron. Those were the two that were terminated. And I mean, I've worked with them on many projects over the years. And I was like, hey, I couldn't get anybody to give me any information about why this project, um, you know, was deemed unpermittable. Like, can you guys help me? And so they're kind of consulting among themselves. I don't know, you know, if they'll be able to give me any information, but I did reach out to them. Okay, so, and, and, so it's sort of like the overarching regulatory questions are important and that you need answers to. But there's a whole other thing about a, an agency that does not explain themselves and you cannot contact just to make sure they have the correct information and that you cannot talk to about the decision, which is nuts. Yeah. And which would seem to me just on its face to be to violate the Administrative Procedure Act. And like they can't make decisions with about, you know, in secret without it. No government agency can really get away with doing that for very long. Um, so, but why would that cause us not to want to sign this? I'm not suggesting. Oh, okay. I'm not suggesting for one second that we not sign. Um, okay. Um, but, but 
I, I would like it, I would like the effort to be successful. And um, and I see like a, to to me the the to be successful really we would really need like the DEP people that make those decisions to want to participate in this. Right. I I agree. And I did I reached out to Brian Harrington, who's the section chief at the DEP's Western Regional Office. Haven't heard back from him, but I mean, I know him. I've worked with him again over the years. So I'll circle back to him. I have a feeling that a lot of the agency staff are not going, to, and maybe it has something to do with their bosses or, you know, who knows, some bureaucratic red tape, you know, that they may not give me a letter to say that they'll participate for the grant application. But again, I'm not above if I get the money going back and um, especially using the legislative delegation to say, look, you guys need to come, you need to be at the table. This is important. These communities want this to happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I know um, a lot of them really don't like going to conferences because they feel like they have a backlog of work that is that they'll never ever finish. And every, every anything that gets them out of the office for a day, they, they don't like to go to. Well, and you know, the other thing too, just to shine a light on this, to shine a bright light on this may uh, result in more staff being hired at DEP. You know, one of the chronic problems with these agencies too, is that they are, sh are perennially short staffed. People retire and they don't backfill the positions. People leave, they don't backfill the positions. Mm -hmm. Can I just uh, mention yeah, sure. something? I mean, I will, I've been, you know, I have been on the Open Space Committee a long time, but also Friends of the South River has been involved in this river restoration and resiliency efforts, you know, since before Storm Irene. And it's been frustrating to see things really slowed down and thwarted by all this. But the thing that I'm really excited about is this idea of design typicals to kind of short, not shortcut, but just give projects a leg up and not have to go th through such an arduous, long, expensive process. Um, and it'd be really great if that could happen. And, and the idea of getting all the different players on the state team cooperating <laughs> is ambitious, but man, it would be amazing. So yeah, I'm here to support this. My, my suggestion, my, my a, a suggestion would be to try to have the Blue Ribbon panel meet at the DEP offices in one of their conference rooms. Mm -hmm. So that, so that, um, that how could they not show up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, and sometimes you can get permission to use the conference room from somebody else and apply pressure that way. <laughs> okay. but, um, um, and I wanted to make it clear too, that um, if for some reason the town did not receive your MVP grant, you obviously would not be on the hook for 300, you know, and $3,000 worth of match. If we were, the check would bounce. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, exactly. So, do we have that letter now? Yes. Um, and um, I don't have the copy to yeah, sign tonight. Uh, and, you know the changes that the changes that I've actually, actually it doesn't seem very significant at this point. It just goes with the guy. So you. So I would make a motion to. Support Kimberly McBee's pie in the sky project. It might, you never know. <laughs> don't, don't hit a home run unless you swing for the fences. Exactly. <laughs> More pie. <laughs> I second that. Yes. And so, and, and this this applies our MVP grant um, as the, as. The match for the project application. The value of the state match is anticipated to be three hundred and three thousand dollars, three hundred three thousand three hundred dollars. If the state fully funds our MVP application, again, this would not be 
actual real money that we pay to anybody. That's the motion. There's a motion. The second. I vote aye. I vote aye. It's unanimous. So, um, good luck. Well, thank you all thank so much. You. It's been, it's always such a pleasure working with the town and we've gotten so much done and there's so much more to do. So keep your fingers crossed um, for this. I have kind of a good feeling about it, but I'll keep looking, even if I don't get funded by this grant program, I'll keep shopping it around. So Anyway, thank you very much. And thank you for moving me to the front of the agenda. I appreciate that. Sure. sure. Thanks for coming. Thanks You're welcome. Me. Good night. Bye. 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 Yeah. See you, Michelle. All right. So next on new business, discuss and vote on the line to line transfer request of the high rate department. Gravel. It's like, it looks like there's a whole mess of gravel already there. No, that's not, that's not much. Oh, shoot. So $50,000 is the amount requested and um, transfer um, balance from, from a balance of 109,551 purchase gravel for our unpaid roads. Do extra maintenance on all those unpaid rooms. So why is this a good thing? Well, I've been short help for half a year. Finally, now I have full staff. Well, ninety-nine percent of the staff. And gravels, the gravels going up. The gravels going to be Everything's going up. You're we able to purchase this under last year's the current year. Current years. Yes. Something really happens. There's a contract, and I don't think that if you happen. had to buy this equivalent amount that you would get for fifty thousand now next year, you would get how much less? I believe we get half. Yes. I actually negotiated a good price on the gravel after it was bid to Kirkcog. Pretty sure next year that's not going to happen. Bid price through Kirkcog was $27 a ton. It was a ton and a half in a yard. And we were at a price of $18 a ton. So, look at the way fuel is. It's so not like I'm um, hoping to get still on that. And you have 109,000 in the account you're taking. It's, yeah, that's my payroll account. And it's because we have been down. Yeah. And you're not going to spend that in the next few weeks in the payroll? Yeah, no, it's, it was already figured out how much I needed to get to the grade. Where's all this gravel going to be stored at? It didn't be much. Well, we'll use it as. Because it's not like it's just going to. Show up in the middle. <laughs> so, this seems like a good idea. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I, although, I don't really want a dirt road. I know people that do. <laughs> um, I guess, I don't know. This is probably a question for you. Are there any dirt roads in it's a line to line transfer that will require both select board and finance committee approval. I mean, it's a line to line transfer, but it's still not a budget, right? Right, right. But it's still, so yeah. Okay. It's because it, well, this is a year, two years ago to separate payroll okay, from so the regular sense. operating budget. Okay, all right, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have okay. clarified. It's between salaries and the expenses. Okay. There. Right. Yeah. So did I hear a motion? No, you made one. You didn't really make one. I moved that we let Ron purchase gravel out of his the money he has available to him. That we approved that we approved the end of year line to line transfer request to the fifty thousand dollars. Yes. But actually, immediate line to line transfer, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Not, I'll, I'll second. <laughs> I. Aye. All in favor, aye. Yes. 
Yeah. First, as soon as as soon as you make the roads real nice, then the complaints shift from roads not good to speeding. Everybody's speeding. People are still asking me why you fixed that road. Roads roads great. Now everybody's speeding. Thankless job, right? When you well, we have a shovel and falls road. Shovel and falls road. Hopefully by the end of the month, the pavement will be down. End of May. Awesome. What's that? End of May. End of May. 24. This is big great group. Great. I'd like to have an answer when people ask. And and, and you I know, know. it's bad because we didn't patch at suction because I didn't want to waste the money. No, no, I, but we passed the money a year ago. Yes. Uh, no, 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 I just... So people ask. And, and you know, Buckland's actually looking pretty good now. So that's what I hear. <laughs> yeah. Have they done some paving? Right? Oh, they've, they've done a lot of paving. Yeah, paving, yeah. Paving. yeah. They paved it a couple days ago. Okay, so I would like. I thought, I thought he said that they do some bathing. They mm -hmm. said, "Yeah, a lot of people in that town could use it." So they paved the whole upper portion, and then where it starts to flatten out a little bit, they're now <coughs> grading that. Even just like graded things, dirt roads so much better than it was. Wasn't well, a dirt road? Oh, oh, as a dirt road. Yeah, no, no, like, you're right. Leave it like this. <laughs> right? No, no, no. It's been paved. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank so you. It's Thank you, Ron. Thank you. And then just have to wait for the finance committee. Yeah. Yeah. Did they say the meeting Wednesday, Thursday? They, they haven't to. told me when the meeting. They wrote to this week, I thought. Did they? Okay. Well, I'll make sure Alan knows it. Thank you. Thanks. Money's Thanks. in the bank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Checks in the mail. That's <laughs> <laughs> <Not> a scary. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know if I'm right, but I missed the two articles. The two articles? Oh, yeah. Kimberly one. Yeah. Yeah. We already voted on that one. Did you vote for Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I've got to use our MVP grant to pay the Long Island Sound. I'm reading our list. Yeah, uh, it's our grant money to help leverage her. <coughs> but I yeah. we own 10% of the MVP. Hmm? We own 10% of the, the it, it, It's only it's only the state portion, not our match that would be so it's three hundred and three thousand that okay. yeah, they're leveraging. Yeah. So that, uh, you know, there's, uh, <coughs> the downside. The and downside. you would have come to speak in favor of it? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm here to speak in favor of it. And the other question, I know they were voting today. I don't know if our money is still in the, the budget or not. The Senate, I think we're supposed to vote on the, Your million? Our money. The, oh. When the governor had approved it, but it was going into the Senate today. I believe it was the Senate. One of the uh, it was expected to do well. <coughs> it was expected to make it. The tax, the tax revenues per month. It, Good. Yeah. Yeah. It just it, it talks about how the largest employer is Raytheon, and they make stingers and javelins and whatever. That's that's all in Massachusetts. It's, I mean, <laughs> Sounds like you really need me then, huh? I'm good. We well, need you. I'm just, I'm good. Good. One. just you know, um, I, I just wanted to note that that I'm so impressed that that actually got to where it is. That's just that's a I tremendous think that the pandemic to make it spin, but I guess I'm no. Good thing because you said that in though. It's last year. I, I, the text is from last year's application. Yeah. I don't know if you heard. I don't know if you're any budget of speed. I called it after I uh, rejected. And they said, well, there was two things. It wasn't the um, design wasn't complete enough. And it turned out it was, but I somehow slipped at that decimal point. So that, was, that was an easy fix. So then we don't have anybody that wants to build out. You need a contractor to right? go to work. So I said, well, I don't have one this year, so I didn't even apply. I think it actually opens up this week. 
It appears I don't have to file or anything. We have a new liquor store that's trying to go in. Right? They're going to. Yeah. Do they count? Nice. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, the thing is, we will we'll never get any commercial, you know, people in, in Conway if we don't have, the, you know, water or sewer, and at least we'll have the sewer. Then. We actually did talk to a potential developer, but um, they only wanted to do a group home, like a big building with a job, you know, whatever. Multi story. Yeah. Story. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, year after year, you always see all these towns and all these projects, and they always look like, you know, uh, why is some town getting a hockey rink built? And what, why is, you know, <coughs> why, you know, why is some office building getting renovations put to it and all this other, just, just we never make it on those lists. And it's just nice to see yeah. our town on these lists. So thanks. All right. Um... I'm going to need some help if we actually are going to. Yeah, I imagine so. <laughs> so. I imagine so. <laughs> so keep your eyes. Yeah, down. yeah. <clears throat> For some people, because right now you're 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 the consultant on, on <laughs> up to, to the select board. Right. So we might have to just you know, bust the bullet and get the committee up and read it. All right, we know that. You see the check. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you're all set with me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Business out of the way too, so lost that one. So discuss and vote on our mosquito opt-out education and outreach plan. Um, so the plan is the the, the exactly. short letter that's very It's right. So this year they it's really easier. simplified it a huge. After telling us it was going to be a nightmare this yeah. year, and that we would like yeah. it would be a miracle if we would get it. Right. Right. So. Basically, the education outreach plan was just check off all the methods you intend to employ and provide a one to two paragraph narrative. So that's the, and I think I listed five different things. Actually, we're going to add a sixth um, because the Board of Health just met earlier and they approved the plan, but they wanted to add in the K through 12. So I, I think we had that checked off last year, but I don't believe it happened. So I just didn't check it off this year because, you know, anyway, but it, it really shouldn't be too difficult to, to get some education um, through the grammar school too. And, and also right. they're going to do- Grammar school is just K through six. Right. So, well, yeah, we can do, and we can do, yeah. Um, and also they're going to do, um, I think we only have one um, camp active this season, but so the Board of Health will help me with those. Is that the old bicycle camp? I can't remember the name of it now. It didn't sound familiar from when I was on the board last year, so I'm not sure which one it, which one it was. Um, so yeah, I may I may just put K through six on there and camps. Anyway, so that's really literally all it is. Um, so if and you know the main thing in my mind is having the monthly articles and the currents because that's really the best way to get information out to people. But we're planning. Um, because um, the, the uh, official posting board is now here at Town Hall. And, you know, Lori used to have the big one that's at the town offices. So we're going to swap. Well, actually, she, I, you know, she's going to take the one that was at the town offices for here. And then I'd like to take the one that's here up to the transfer station and put it up there as a community bulletin board. So we could put some of this information on that. We can put South River. There's all kinds of information we could put up at the transfer station. So. So hopefully, if everybody is good with that, right behind where the table is. is that well, the table is going to go up there? against the mall. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, because okay. having it up against the the shed was just interfering with traffic too much and people standing there talking yeah, and yeah. You know. So we're going to keep it all in one spot. Um, but the bulletin board will be on the shed, the TSA Great. shed. Yeah. So, no. So if the board's good with that, then I'll just go ahead and put in the. Our application. Um, motion to approve the 
opt out education and outreach plan that we just reviewed. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. That was something that we expected would never happen, and then it did. With the opt out? Well, yeah, yeah. 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 I think I think we're in luck because if you you know you look at the map, there's a low incidence of anything happening in our area anyway. We might have more of a tussle if it were. But sometimes that did not. You know, right. Most. Yeah. Most. Yeah. In the FERCOG meeting, I think there was five or six towns that got approved. Like Twenty towns that got tonight. Yeah. And um, we did a good job. That's it. That's it. The gold standard. The gold standard. We're the gold standard. Um, so let's go back up to the top of the, of, uh, the agenda and do the, the for a vote to approve the minutes of May second. So they look good. I think they were great. I knew. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we need a. Motion to approve the accounts payable warrants for $72,493.95. Payroll warrant for $125,653.38. The payroll deduction warrant for $31,922.45. Did you use any of those? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Meetings attended by select board members. Um, I, I went on a on a, and I'm not sure whether this is an officially a meeting, but uh, the Conservation Commission was asked to go out look at the Beaver Dam in Southern Conway that appears to have been torn down or at least destroyed enough that it's not a dam anymore. And group that I went out. Into the swamp and looked at it, and definitely not a dam anymore. That's not clear to us who did it. And could it have been beavers or was it definitely man made? Bad engineering? No, I think so. Yeah, I mean, it mean, if it had happened in the middle of Hurricane Irene, you might say, you know, that did but it really looks like somebody dismantled. But there's no chainsaw marks or anything. So we're trying to figure out which state agency might do an investigation or would be the appropriate investigation to at least start calling all of the local owners. The property when it's on is owned by a number of people, different people. So we don't really think it's the Conservation Commission, but it may turn out that it is. This, and, and it doesn't happen often. I, I mean, you know, Everybody we talk to says, oh, we just have somebody fill out a form with your board of health and you can get permission to relocate the beavers or do something with the beavers. You say, no, no, no. This is after the fact. Somebody did not do that, and then they destroyed the dam. And it's, I guess, not done very often, which is a good thing. Because it is an environmental police. It's a, Um, and uh, I know there's a meeting every day, every day this week. So, um, public comments we heard over this town administrator update. I forgot to make myself a copy. I put. Do you have a copy here? We you. Um, I don't think it was in the packet. Don't think you mailed it. No. No, no I have it. Um, yeah, I've got it. I just. Um, yeah. I was just looking at the next thing on the agenda. Oh, so okay. here we go. Okay. All right. Actually, there's quite a few things. So let's see here. Um, so our four of our five. Transfer station attendants uh, attended here in the general purpose room um, the first of their two OSHA trainings on Tuesday. So that's really 
great. These are being paid for by a grant through Maya, so and run with Jan and Mean. And then Rose. Do, do they have boots yet or, or they do not have boat boots? Um, Jan had also um, procured through the Maya grant some um, safety equipment for them, including some leather gloves and you know, a bunch of other got all kinds of stuff. Boots were not included. They have gotten um, t-shirts, at least. Um, we were going to do the sweatshirts. Nobody wanted the, the hooded sweatshirts. So they all just did t-shirts for the summer and we'll look at okay. something else for the next festival year. Um, and as you know, since I sent earlier today and posted on the website, the compost program starts up again on That's Wednesday. Great. I am so excited. It's really going to happen. Um, it's really going to happen. On Wednesday. On Wednesday. They're delivering the, the 64 gallon carts Wednesday morning. Um, I'm going to look into purchasing the liner bags um, ourselves um, because we'll end up paying less per toter. Because the reason I was not going to go with them again was because of the cost. It's going to end up being about $6,000 a year to do the compost. With the cost of our trash being thrown away going up, um, plus it's just a great thing to make compost. Um, plus a lot of people were and we'll, sa it. we'll save money on that weight not going out in trash. That's what I'm saying. Yes, yeah. so, right. So this is I'm sorry. As long as people do compost. As long as they well, as long as they're not throwing it in the, in the trash right. and putting yeah. in the compost, right? And the thing that's so nice about this compost program is that you can put meat and bones and all kinds of stuff in there that you cannot possibly do at home. So you don't have to worry about bears or anything else. Mm -hmm. And Franklin County had given this this wonderful you know trailer that locks, and so no bears are going to get in there. So I, I just think it's wonderful. And then in addition, Western Mass Rendering will be bringing us up a 55 gallon drum where people can put any kind of vegetable or animal fat in there. So if anybody still deep fries turkeys, you can throw that in there. Your bacon grease can go in there, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I thought that was really important since we all have septics. It's nice to know that there's a, a place you can put all of your um, your, your <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so still on the... <laughs> Still on the transfer station, I wanted to let you all know, um, you know, if you've seen, been up there recently in the back end, you see how much the puddles are there and how much it's, yeah. so clearly we need to work on that. So Ron, um, Janamine, Larry Hansen of DEP, and then Matt Kassane from Fuss and O'Neill, we all were up there. Well, uh, Fuss and O'Neill were doing the groundwater monitoring um, that they have to do, you know, uh, on the Hell property and also for us. Um, so they were up there. So we all talked about what it's going to be, and it should be a pretty simple fix. Jam um, Lesser will be putting in with DEP for the permit. Um, so it's basically and then Ronald do work. Yes, yeah, and we're hoping to do it because I do have some funds in the transfer station budget this year because it was fifteen thousand allocated for um, the the tipping fee at the MRF, but we knock on wood haven't had to pay any. So, you know, <laughs> try to use that before the end of the fiscal year for this because we know we have to do it. So we're going to literally just probably mark with um, some kind of spray paint, you know, just the outline of where it's going to be, lift up the asphalt, put in a bunch of fill, gravel, you know, and then just put another four inch cap and then we'll be done. So they did, it was not required, but requested that we use a, um, a gas meter and the and chief baker says we have one um on you know while just in case there's anything volatile coming off while that's going on and ep will probably just pop in here and there but i expect it to be pretty uneventful since this happened unfortunately not that long ago as well mm -hmm. and rob remembers what it looked like <laughs> so um <laughs> i just hope it doesn't have to happen again too soon uh it's long with this week and then um Last week, um, Rosalie and Megan from GZA kind of walked me through just making sure I got the MVP grant actually submitted correctly because it was really quite a bear to just make sure everything was in the right place. So we got the, the GZA. Um, they're the ones who do all the technical work for us, both on Delabar and also for MVP, the engineering firm. 
they do, yeah, a lot of amazing work. They have they have the whole matrix of all the stuff that's happened on the South River and all the projects and all ranked and yeah. We should get a copy of that. We have a copy. Yeah, I'll send it to you. It's it's amazing. Um, so anyway, so that was successfully submitted. And then last thing I just wanted to mention, Susan Fenton had sent me an email concerned again about all of the logs that are still down on Warren Book Road. So I did explain to her that, you know, the highway department had to get all this other stuff done while they had the lift and that they're, they are moving on getting moving everything that's there, but they're doing it, you know, as they can, depending on the work that they're, everything's so seasonal. <laughs> so. In fairness to Susan Fenton, I get, I get, uh, about Langwood Road and Waitley Road and um, all the tree trimming, where, wherever the highway department does tree trimming, we get comments about. And I saw the apple tree was cut down on the open. Yes. Hollow yes. Park field. With, with Just broken hollow. Yeah. It's, really? And, and uh, yeah, I mean, and the, we've so, talked about that for a couple of years. Yes. Because when you get to that stop sign, it obscures the yield. You can't see back up Waitley Road. Yes, you can. So it really felt to me that it should have been cut down, but it was a difficult thing to pull the trigger on that, I think. So I'm glad it was cut down, but some people may not be happy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. There's some people that are not. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it, but in, in general, just the way that we do that with leaving giant stumps for long periods of time as eyesores until they are dealt with, just in general, that's not a popular way. Just Can we put a free sign on them, firewood take, you know, something like that? Yeah, you know, take. I, I, I'm okay with that. I, I, mean, I don't know. I know those of us that live on. The state highway <laughs> don't need any of that stuff. You have know, wood stuff. What's that? You have know, wood stuff. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, all right. So, uh, and so in mail, um, the Deerfield River study. Did, did you see this in the packet? So there's a. Uh, there's a proposed federal act requiring the Interior Department to do a report as to why the Deerfield River should not become a part of the wild scenic river system. Was that this thing that looked like a bill? Yes. Yeah. It, was, sure what, what it was from uh, Christopher Curtis. I thought it was associated with the humor. So, so now, I, you know, I, I wondered about that. Just, you know, I, I wondered why, how. A river that's what is it like a hundred and something miles with how many dams? Six major power generating dams. I don't know how that. Be. But but um, and I also wonder whether if it is in that system, it unlocks additional. Whether that is a regulatory burden for us or a regulatory opportunity for us. It doesn't look as if. I forwarded to Louise the um, email that that came with. Do you Correct. want to read that to you? Yes, Since it yes, doesn't really yes. make sense with that. I just realized that. But I ah. Okay, so this is from Christopher Curtis. It says, Dear Select Board, I'm writing his promise to keep you informed regarding our progress seeking wild and scenic river designation for segments of the Deerfield River. Thanks again for the letter of support that your board previously submitted. Representative McGovern and Senator Markey have now finished work on a bill to study wild and scenic river designation for segments of the Deerfield River, river and are ready to introduce this bill. I have attached the study bill here. We'd love to have your endorsement for the actual bill as it moves forward. Um, they're also working on a planning a media event to accompany the bill's introduction and would like to invite all the supporting members of Congress to participate, as well as town and agency officials from the watershed. The event will likely be held in the town of Deerfield on the river in late May or early June. Please let me know if you are in support of the bill and if you would like to attend our celebration event. Uh, I need to know more about how it would affect Conway before I can determine whether I'm in support of it or not. I remember thinking it, there's a potential that it would impact, you know, it, 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 it affects private property owners and their private property along the river or whatever, then I don't, 
I don't know. You got to know what we're signing well, up for. Well, the dams are private property. Um, they're regulated, yeah, but they're regulated. It's a little different, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's and you're right. It'd be good to know how it would impact them. Money? Are they still going to always be allowed to use trade secret? Uh, the trade secret exception to the Clean Water Act that was created by the last administration that allows them to not have to disclose how much sediment they come back in. Mm -hmm. Things like that. So I'm happy to reach out to Mr. Curtis and ask him for more information. Would you like him to attend a meeting or how would you? Yeah, um, the select board wants to know how this would affect. Um, and do you want me to? Would he be willing to attend? I, I, don't, I haven't asked him. Yeah, relatively easy. To yep. to but then he did get back. He did prime. I remember him prime. I remember saying, you have to get back to us on this. And he said, I will. And he did. So he gets bonus points for that. I think this is really just asking to conduct a study. Right, it is. It's not. I mean, it's not to con conduct a study with the purpose being to. Right. Think. Without, I mean, but we're right. not committing to anything. Really just right, but usually the way that this stuff works is that there's like a pathway and that once like the step A is taken, then it, it's on the pathway and then that's where it ends up. So, but that's, I wanted to know that too. Like, is this just an innocuous study or is this yeah. step yeah. one in the inexorable climb or march towards wild and scenic river designation? It's kind of a capitalized national wild and scenic river system. Um, is that I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of wild scenic places, but they haven't industrialized out of existence. But all right. Anything else? Announcements the next meeting. So, oh, uh, it was well, the, so I did. I had a, I'll focus on the piece of mail, maybe. But I got a piece of mail from uh, from Ethan Giles of NextJam, who said they are continuing to look into the causes of the harmonic harmonic distortion in the and 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 the solar panels remain off, as we talked about. I think even last week, um, and. It hasn't changed a lot, but he just wanted us to know that he's thinking about us. Um, you know, and right now they're looking at either it's the inverters that convert the DC that the solar panels make into AC. And they've gotten the vendor who they bought the inverters from, which were the ones that were approved by Eversource to, to install involved. And uh, or it's Eversource. And and it could be something an anomaly in the power lines. The three phase power lines that connect, you know, the, the connection to that to the power lines or in, you know, bringing it up to Route 116. He said it could be weeks or months. Is it not? So he's anxious to get the. I am sure they are. Turn are. back on. This been off for January. Wow. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yes, that's this is how. But he said this is a real anomaly. I mean, they built a lot of solar and never seen this before. How many times have you heard the term harmonic distortion? Isn't that an oxy? It's just the, Did they the, build it's such an oxy one. Ancient Indian dairy farm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can call static. Well, what kind of car was up there? Yeah, no. <laughs> Right, so the, there was also the we do have a request to meet on the, for on next Monday. Mm -hmm. um, I know we talked about possibly not having to do that, but um, okay, okay, it shouldn't be that long. No, it should be very quick. I just want to point out there was more one more piece of mail on there oh. at the very end. But yeah. it was it was it actually came to my office. If you just turn the whole thing over, so your entire packet's on the very back. Um, it was that it just came to my office. And I actually registered for this. It's the Climate um, Forestry Resilient and Carb Resilience and Carbon Walk through 
Conway Forest doesn't yeah, say this too. which forest, but I signed up for it, and I guess they're going to let me know. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to, to let people know about it in case somebody wants to. Um, May 22nd. Yep, May 22nd. 10, I think 10 to 12. Yep. Yeah, but it doesn't tell you which forest. So you have to go on on, oh. on there um, to sign up for it. I don't know. I do not know. So, so they may not, possibly they're doing this without the knowledge or consent of the Forest Committee, the Forest Trails Committee? I don't know if Forest okay. and Trails, I, this is the first I'd heard of it. So, but mm -hmm. I know Mary Whitmore is, is giving okay. a, yeah, I don't know. Permission. No, no, this is coming from like, TCR, like, right? Like, but yeah. the last forest walk we did was very well attended. Yeah. So oh, yeah. We definitely get the work. I think it's a great thing. The the, yeah. the, the the thing is, I don't know which forest, and I this was the first I heard of it, seeing the postcard come in. So I was a little surprised. A couple of weeks ago, when I did the the forest and trails walk mm -hmm. um, at the Cricket Hill State Forest, the town forest on Cricket Hill, Mary Whitmore was supposed to be there. She was advertised. Mm. She did not. She was not there. That was a turnout of over 20 or whatever. That was a good turnout. So, um, so yeah, if anybody wants to join uh, that walk, call 413-262-2370. That Sunday, May 22nd, 10 a.m. to noon, uh, in one of the two town forests. Hopefully, when you sign up for it, they'll tell you. Like, you know, to, the, the uh, URL for signing. Well, just, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't tell you the URL. It doesn't. It it does oh. not. No, oh. and I did get something from them saying that I was signed up and that I would get more information later. Hmm. Okay. Maybe. So maybe or not. Yeah. Right. Um, so next meeting will be Monday, May sixteenth. Yeah, here it should not be. Great. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.